two, one, and we are officially live. What's up? It's Mike Wall back with another episode of the Agent Revolution podcast, the place where we deconstruct the biggest challenges facing today's real estate agents so that they can build a sustainable, profitable, and most of all, fulfilling real estate business. I'll be honest with you, man. I don't know that I've ever been this excited about a show because I was going through my Facebook feed uh, a couple weeks back and my buddy Dan Beer posted um, something about an agent, a guy named Jeremy Larson, who's actually on the show today, going from 8.5 million to 31 million in only 12 months. And uh, I don't know that it gets any better than that, brother, but I'm certainly excited to dig into how that was done. Hey, keep in mind, these episodes are always recorded and transcribed over at theagentfactory.com. Jeremy, you ready to roll, brother? Let's do it, my man. How are you? Man, I'm doing great, dude. I'm jazzed about this show. Um, yeah. and the great thing is, and the good, the really cool thing about our company is that, you know, we've been able to um, connect with people like you on a whole different level. And yeah. uh, I didn't know you before this, but Dan had posted yeah. something about your success. And, you know, that's when I reached out to you on Facebook. I figured we got to get you on because you could drop a ton of value. But uh, before we get started into that, let's talk a little bit about your background, how you got into real estate. Yeah, um, I love everything about real estate. Before I got into the industry, I just I loved real estate um, from an investor standpoint. Flip properties, had rental properties, and I've been in sales and marketing my whole life. So um, I actually built the Inc. 500 company. We we're three times on the Inc. 500 list, building sales teams. Um, and when that technology shifted, that industry shifted, I knew exactly what I wanted to do, which was get into real estate. And, um, you know, just, just get into the business. I love it. You know, I, I really true love it. I love every aspect of it. I love the highs and the lows and, and it's, sometimes it's tough, but, um, there's just, there's a lot of fun to be had. I mean, I'm having a lot of fun and sometimes you talk to agents and they look at you weird, right? They're like, what do you mean you're having fun? This is stress. This is a lot of work, yeah. but I'm having a lot of fun. Uh, my team, uh, just started building my team. Um, they're having a lot of fun and we're just in a great place, man. So how long have you actually been licensed in real estate? I got my license in 2014. 2014. Okay. And just, and right away, you kind of started in on the investment side of it, right? No. So no, that was prior to having my license. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I have rental properties and have flipped properties before coming into the industry, um, getting a license. And so came in, uh, to the industry um in 2014 and you know did okay by my standards um good for this market but just kind of okay not where i wanted to be kind of kept scratching and crawling and, and trying to find you know how do i get to where i want to be how do i how do i get to that place how do i get to that elite level um where does that work you know where is that and for me um how I learn the most is being around others that are where I want to be. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm a student. I love reading. I love podcasts. I love going to conferences. Um, I have two coaches, um, but nothing is more impactful for me than being around people that are where I want to be. And you yeah. think of an athlete, pick any sport, pick basketball, pick a golf, pick golf. Yeah. You can read a book, you can watch a podcast, you can go watch somebody hit balls at the driving range. But until you're out there on that course, playing with people that are at the level you want to be, um, it's it's a whole different way of learning. And then to have people help you with your blind spot to say, hey, if you hit it over here, this is what's going to happen. Yeah. By the way, you don't see it because you've never been on this course before, but there's, there's a bunker or there's water over there. Right. And so I've just been really searching and looking for that. And obviously, you know where I found it. Yeah, that's so cool, man. I love that so much. And sometimes I think that gets overlooked because it, it is – the group, the, the people you surround yourself, the group you surround yourself with ultimately will determine how high or how low you go because, you know, this is true. Like if you, if you have kids, right, that's why you're concerned about who they hang out with, right? Because you know the type of impact that peer pressure can have. But in business, it, it also reigns true that if you hang around people who are doing what you want to do or they're doing it at a higher level, essentially they're pulling you up. And, um, you know, I, I definitely don't want to gloss over that. And I, I'm, I know that's probably been an integral part of your success. And yeah. it's cliche because I know people have heard that before, but it is so right. true. It is yeah. So true. 
Yeah, I mean, that's it. It's a high level. It's a high level of accountability. And I, I think for me, um, what's been huge getting to where I'm at. And the funny thing is, when you talk about the numbers right now, like, it's awesome, but it's nothing compared to what we've done the last two months, you know, and so we're on track um, as a team to hit 80 million this year. Um, we're on our goal is 100 transactions. Um, and we're on track to do that right now. It's only been two months into the year, um, but we have a you know, we've got a ton of volume in transactions closing in March. Um, we've already got a handful for April. So um, we're in a really good place. And a lot of that is just from that community. And I think in our business, I mean, I think that's the biggest gap in realtors getting to where they want to be is, is, is who they surround themselves with, where they're at, and, you know, I've heard you say it in, on previous podcasts. I mean, you see some of these offices in the culture, it, it, it's scary. It's actually not lifting that agent up. It's not pushing them up or helping them get anywhere. It's actually bringing them down. Yeah. And, and um, that's a tough place to be when you're in sales. No doubt about it. And you just so the audience knows, you're serving Santa Cruz, California, right? Santa Cruz, California. Yeah, we're in a, it's a small market. It's a small market. We're like 160, 70 transactions a month, 1,300 uh, realtors. It's very competitive. Um, they call it a red ocean market. There's a lot of sharks. There's a lot of blood in the water. It's a smaller market. It's, it's an amazing place to live, an amazing place to work. Yeah. And I'm, I'm happy every morning to wake up here and do what I do. The only reason I know Santa Cruz, California is because growing up, I remember skateboards. There was Santa Cruz yeah. skateboards growing up, man. So I, except, I think yeah. I put Santa Cruz on the, mark, or on the map for me. Yeah, that's uh, that's the uniform around town. I mean, everybody owns a Santa Cruz uh, skateboards hoodie. That's awesome, man. So I, I know everybody was tuned in because they want to hear like when did it finally kick in for you? So if you got your if you got your license in 2014 and you were you were kind of uh, scratching and clawing, you know what I mean? And and yeah. in 2018 you did eight and a half million, and then in yeah. 2019 31 million. Mm -hmm. How does that happen, man? Um, it happened. It, it actually happened really fast. Um, I, I, I'm going back to the community. I mean, this is I'm all, I'm all about the community, who you surround yourself with and getting out of your own head, uh, being able to jump on the phone, you know, with Dan Beer, being able to jump on the phone with Kyle Whistle, being able to tap into people that have nothing to do um, directly with my alignment at EXP, Veronica Figueroa and, and you know, out in Florida. And just being able to tap into this community and have them say, hey, you know what? You're not seeing, you have a blind spot, Jeremy. You're not seeing that if you keep doing this, this is what's going to happen. And so that's a game changer. Um, and I think in our industry, there's a lot of distractions. And for me, be, being able to tap into um, other minds and leaders of people that are where I want to be, it helps me create a path, a step-by-step -step process. Because like right now, I'm crystal clear on what we're doing, how we're doing it. And I'm not overwhelmed. I'm not, you know, like my, I'm not losing my mind or anything. And, um, yeah, I've got a team of six right now. We've got uh, the seventh realtor starting in about three weeks. Um, we've got two others that, that we're talking to from that are with another company. Um, and we're busy. We're really, really, really busy. Yeah. And um, I'm not losing my mind or, or just freaking out over it because I know exactly what step to take. I know what's coming. I know what the blind spots are. And so um, it's, it's the only, I don't know, for me, it's, it's the way to go. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so there's a lot to unpack there really. And, and so for you, like when you, when you talk about in $8 million, eight and a half million dollars is not a bad um, level of production at all. And I'm sure there are people that are watching, listening to this and they're thinking, you know, I'm at six or seven or eight million dollars or ten million dollars, and I want to go yeah. to thirty or fifty. And so, like, what what kind of advice would you give those people if they want to go? If they're at eight and a half million right now and they want to go to thirty? Yeah, a big part of it is focus um, and being intentional throughout your day. You know, if you documented what you did each day, um, you might not be real happy. Um, you know, as a realtor, ultimately what we're trying to do is meet as many people as we can, get in front of as many people as we can, get them to like us, trust us, let them know we're a realtor, and then we follow up with them. Right. However you're going to do that, whether that's socially, Facebook, a phone call, client parties, open house, however you're going to do that. Ultimately, that's what we're all trying to do. 
And once you understand that and you decide how you're going to do that and you get a clear vision and, and intention on what you're going to do, I mean, the, 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 the sky is the limit, so to speak. And so I think um, the biggest challenge is just getting distracted, not being focused and just not committing basically to a plan. I mean, how many realtors do we see that are just kind of float, floating around waiting for something to come their way? They're not proactively going after it. Yeah, yeah. So what's your favorite te piece of technology that you guys are using right now? Um, for, for us, Facebook is huge. You know, I mean, we're open to all, we're open to all of it. You know, I mean, we're open to all of it, but I think at the end of the day, people don't recognize Facebook for what it can do. Mm -hmm. um you know it's free um for the most and it would not be the agent revolution podcast without any technical difficulties so we'll just bide some time here until mr jeremy comes back and it looks like he's coming back now what's up brother lost you for that's okay that's okay and so you're back in live right, we're back it, we're back, we're back. Agent Revolution podcast without some technical difficulties. I always say that, and, and I say it tongue in cheek. It's it actually it's funny, but um, you know, for us, it, I the in the real the, if you, the irony there, if you didn't notice, is that I ask you what your favorite piece of technology is as my technology failed me. <laughs> but anyway, you said you were open to um to all technology, but you guys were really having some success on social media right now. And how yeah. are, how are you guys using Facebook and, and some I of the, mean, yeah, we're doing it. We're, we're just doing everything that everybody that all the stuff that we're supposed to do. Um, nothing that's going to be wild and crazy that nobody else is is already doing. And, uh, you know, there's there's just such a high level to engage there. Um, just the fact that you can uh, position yourself with brand new clients on Facebook and pop up on their feed and then how you can retarget and set up ads and, and just there's real simple things doing a market update video. Yeah. Um, you can see that the, the last one I did and um, those perform real well. So, you know, we're not doing anything that's wild and crazy, um, but we're just sticking sticking to the script and doing what works. You know what's so cool, man, about what you like? I, I think people will actually tune in because they think that they're going to hear about something um, that other people aren't doing. And the reality of it is, I keep doing these shows and we keep getting the same feedback from top agents. And it's, it's not that they're doing anything unique or special, it's that they're doing the same things consistently. Um, and that's where success is you know, that's where success is born is coming in and doing the same things over and being very consistent about it. Would you agree with that? Yeah, a hundred percent. Um, you know, uh, yesterday I had coffee with uh, a newer realtor and, you know, he's asking what, what works, what should I do? The reality is everything works if you're going to work it. Yeah. Everything right? works and nothing and, and, uh, nothing doesn't. We always say that that's, I love that statement. Yeah. I mean, you think about it. So, you know, whatever it is, open houses, uh, door knocking, even cold calling. I don't do that, but cold calling works. Um, online leads, they work. Facebook, Instagram, Zillow, Realtor, all these things work if you're going to work them. They work on one level or another. Maybe yeah. it's not a fit for you or your personality or how you want to go about your business, but you need to figure out what works for you and then just focus on that, right? Yeah. Uh, that's it. Why do you so, I mean, we love open houses. Um, real quick, I mentioned open houses. Open houses, I, I think when I first got my real estate license, I could not believe the opportunity that exists at an open house. Coming from a, a sales and marketing background and coming into the industry as a realtor, I was I was just blown away that not everybody does an open house when when they have listings. I, I don't I still don't understand why realtors aren't doing open houses. It's, it's a huge opportunity. Um, of course you want to sell the house, but it's also your pop-up shop. It's your office for the day. And you have consumers coming to look at the product that you're selling. Yeah. Um, so it, it, it's a, it's probably the biggest thing that a new realtor could do, right? Is get consistent about doing open houses. I love that. I mean, you know what, you know what, I just had an epiphany there because I, basically what you're doing at an open house is you're turning it into a retail business, right? We know 
we yeah. we essentially you're bringing consumers in to look at your product and in, in, in real estate for the most part in on any other level is not like that right it's us um, going after the consumer right and, and so but when you set up shop at an open house you're essentially creating a retail space for people to come in and visit you and to piggyback on that I love open houses as well because open houses can get you back on track extremely quickly and what I mean by that is that you if you if your business is down and you need to create appointments for yourself go sit in an open house if, if someone comes in and they're not represented you're essentially creating an appointment for yourself. And if someone else comes in, you're creating another appointment and another and another. Yeah. Yeah. And um, the neighbors are great. You want to, you want those neighbors behind you. And I mean, we all know there's somebody in that neighborhood thinking of selling in the next year or two. Right. And so um, I think it's great to network with the neighbors. Um, we've done private neighbor uh, VIP open houses just for the neighbors. Yeah. Friday, five to, you know, five to eight or five to seven thirty. Start networking with the neighbors, get them behind you because in the area that we live in, everybody knows somebody who wants to move to Santa Cruz. Everybody knows somebody who wants to move here. I don't know if they can, but they want to move here. So there's a lot of value I see in, in networking with with the neighbors. Um, and there's always a neighbor that's thinking of uh, selling a home. Yeah. And, and so like you guys. <laughs> When you started to figure this out, it it sounds to me like it really started to get fun for you. And I can tell, you know, when, when you and I first jumped on the phone um, before we started the show, um, you had a huge smile on your face. And it really does get fun when you start to figure some of this out. It becomes yeah. almost addictive. And so, what 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 is where are you taking this whole thing? And what is the like? What is the pinnacle of success for you in real estate? <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if there's a pinnacle or if there's a certain level that you reach. Um, the best thing about real estate is is helping helping our clients achieve that goal, getting that house, right? It is the best feeling to have someone call you and say, wow, you helped me get my dream house. Or, hey, Mike, man, we never thought we could pull this off. We've been renting for 18 years and uh, you helped us make this dream come true and knowing right that you're you're a real estate investor you understand the power just one property being managed correctly throughout a family can change so much for the kids and the kids kids and so on and so forth if it's managed properly then you dig deeper and talk about leveraging that and buying rentals and so on and so forth but the power of um, helping somebody get into that first house, um, it, it's, it's an incredible feeling that we as realtors all get to experience. Mm -hmm. And so you never want to take that for granted. Um, as far as where, you know, where I'm going, what my goals are, you know, like I mentioned earlier, you know, it, it's the team model right now. And so I've been very, very fortunate. Um, I have an amazing, amazing group of realtors underneath me. Um, I hire and fire off of culture. Um, not experience, not experience. So I'll take I'll take brand new, positive, upbeat, um, gritty, ready to go to work um, over uh, um, you know a sassy, grumpy person who's who's been around for for a long time. So um, I I have a lot of new realtors and um, they're doing very very well. The whole team's in escrow right now, um, and uh, it's it's just a really good feeling. It's 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 a great group. I'm trying to mimic the community that I'm a part of and EXP yeah. here internally in my office. You yeah. know what I mean? So yeah. everybody's helping everybody. Our group text. I'm not always the one that answers the questions. Yeah. Uh, someone else jumps on and answers it. And so that is, you know, that's that's a magical community when you as a leader don't have to answer every single question because the culture is in place. And the culture will kind of feed itself and answer the questions and set the standard for everybody. Love that, love that, man. So, and we set up a Google chat here just recently too, and and um, so a lot of that reigns true with us. Um, we we oftentimes like we have questions post, and somebody else will jump in and answer the questions. That's when you know that you set up the right culture, man. That's when it, oh, it reaffirms everything you're doing. Yeah, it's big. It's it's big stuff because, um, you know, you can imagine there's other other groups um, where that's not that's not taking place. And so it, it's a special thing. And so, you know, that's something I learned a long time ago is you, you hire based off culture, um, not experience. And you, you hire slow, you fire fast. Um, but ultimately, it's all it's all about the culture when you're building a team. So um, you're obviously you're 
your your focus right now is building your team um, and yeah. not, not only building your team, but building them up and providing opportunity for them. What are you guys, from a lead generation standpoint, are, are you guys using like um, any of the um, uh, lead generation platforms like Boomtown or Commissions Inc or anything like that? Yeah, so um, we just went all in on the KV Core team yeah. CRM platform. Um, obviously with EXP, we get KV Core for free and then we get the team um, CRM at a, at a significant discount. I spent three months um, looking at the ones you just mentioned and even more trying to figure out what was the best one. I even talked to people that I really looked up to, found out what they liked about they, the one they were using. And what I found is a lot of these platforms, Mike, they all, for the, for the most part, they, they do very similar things. There's not really a large difference. I agree 100%. I'm just going to say it and I love them all, yeah. uh, you know, but there's just not a huge difference. And if one of them comes out with something that nobody else is doing, we yeah. all know everybody's going to start offering that technology in one way or another. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we're loving the stuff that, that, um, that KV core team platform um, allows us to do. It's pretty sweet. Um, so we're loving that um we're big on you know we're also you know we're old school and, and we're modern you know we're doing client parties we're calling the database once a quarter um i'm writing notes you know still doing that still carving out time to write the personal notes after a phone call um or grabbing a cup of coffee we've got our next client appreciation party in may yeah um those are those are big that those are those are not that they're big parties but that's um, very, very important stuff is, is getting face to face and in front of people. So what do those look like? If you could walk me through yeah. that. Yeah, that's a great question. So here's the deal. You can do a small one, right? So you can go go take 12 of your 12 of your buddies or 12 of your girls and go out, have a ladies night, have a guys night, take them out for dinner, take them out for appetizers, take them out for a drink. Just get an environment where you're in front of them, connect with them. Um, and then get comfortable in your skin of saying, look, hey, guys, if you ever come across anybody looking to buy or sell a home, let me know. As you know, I'd love to help them. And the first time you say that, it's just like, oh, I don't want to say this. And, you know, it, it feels salesy and tacky and all this stuff. Right. Yeah. But it's who you are and you need to say it. The more you say it, the response is an auto response. So then the response is. Oh yeah, Mike, of course, there's nobody else. I wouldn't send anybody to, yeah. you know, so um, it's, it's important that you actually ask for the referral and that you educate your database on how to send you referrals, right? Every realtor says they get referrals, but they don't have really a strategy to go get those referrals. And you've got to ask, you've got to educate your database on how to get those referrals some of the most you know, important people in my database from a referral standpoint, they may never buy a home here, Mike in Santa Cruz, but you know what? If they're standing in line at the grocery store and they hear someone say their aunt needs to sell their home, they're gonna tap them on the shoulder and say, hey, I know the best realtor in town, my buddy, you gotta call him, he's the best. Let me get your number and I'll get you guys connected. Yeah, that's how often are you doing these parties? Um, we're doing four a year. Okay. Yeah. So, so the next cool. one, so there's the small ones and then there's the, there's the bigger ones. Um, so the one we're doing in May, uh, is at a winery. Um, so that one's going to be at a winery. Um, they get tickets for wine tasting. We'll have it catered by a local restaurant. There'll be music and there will be a raffle. And so everybody gets greeted when they come in, we thank them for their support. We don't call them clients. We call them family. It's yeah. going to be the Larson real estate team um, family party. Um, and, you know, you get up uh, at the middle of the event or so and you do the raffle. You thank everybody for coming. And, that, and that's it. It's not this big, fancy production that you need to do. Um, we do the we, we do a pie party at the office. Right. So Tuesday of Thanksgiving week, uh, every, we invite everybody in the database um, to come by the office and grab a pie. Tell us what kind you want and we'll have it here. Literally, you can pull up, honk your horn, and I'll run down and give you a pie. I love um, it. So that one's great. And, you know, we do a couple other uh, other events. We've done a Halloween party for adults and, and a handful of other things. So, yeah. Do you think more than anything else that tapping into your database has made the biggest impact on your business? 
Yeah, it's been, it's, um, it's up there. Yeah. Yeah. It's huge. That and, and the approach to open houses, right. Um, is, is a game changer. The biggest problem with, as being a realtor is getting now business yeah. and open houses are the quickest way to get that now business. Um, but the database, you know, if you take care of it, you take care of those relationships, they're going to take care of you. Yep. Yep. Absolutely, man. Yeah. Well, I, I, I am, I'm rooting for you, brother. I love to see that. And, and, you know, you quadrupled your business last year. It looks like you're going to double again. It gets, by the way, it gets harder and harder to do, you know, once you, once you hit a hundred million and then you want to go to 200 million in a year, it's going to get, it's going to get a little bit harder to do, but if anybody can do it, I bet you can, man. Hey, so is there anything that I should have asked you that I didn't? Oh man, you know, you asked some, some great questions. You asked some great questions. Um, what didn't you ask that you could have, you know, maybe how the day starts or how the day ends. Yeah. What does your uh, ideal day look like? I, I mean, at this point, what does it look like? Yeah. And, and what do you encourage your agents to do daily? Yeah. So, I mean, my, my, um, my expectations and accountability on myself, um, similar to you are, are pretty hard. You know, I'm, I'm up at 4:45. Um, I'm drinking the green shake. I'm going into meditation and gratitude and then I'm exercising and then I'm reviewing the goals. And then I'm, then I'm home in time to make breakfast for my girls and, and help get them ready for school and stuff like that. And then I'm off to work. Um, but it's so important to take, a, take some quiet time in the morning, look at your day, look at your goals and, and really stay in control of that schedule. When you start getting busy in our, in our industry, it's, it's nonstop, right? Um, the phone rings, the text messages, the emails, it's nonstop. So I, I think it's super important and healthy, um, especially for realtors, um, to carve out that time in the morning where you're really setting your intentions, getting a peace of mind with yourself and getting really clear on what you want to do on this day before you start reacting to everything that's thrown at you. Does that require any talent or any skill? No. None, right? And, and, and it's, it's, it's hard, right? It's yeah. hard not easy to get up um early it's it, it, it it's hard it, but you need to know why you want to do it and the more you do it you realize how much more valuable and, and stronger and productive it makes you well success leaves clues right and i never argued with that like if i if i that's something that you can control very easily um you know you you be, being talented at something being talented at the piano um you know it they're they're you know there's there's things that you can be talented at, but you know, getting up at 4:45, drinking a green shake, um, going to work out, meditating—you don't have to be talented to do those things. And no. and, and the, the funny thing is, it's like I said before, it's like I keep bringing people on, and they keep saying the same thing. Like these really six, uber successful realtors, they start their they all start their day the same way, and so yeah. um, it, it the show starts to sound a little redundant, but it's a good thing because. I'm hoping the people that follow us, they're taking notes and especially on these things that they can control very easily, like waking up, you know, at, at 4.45 yeah. or five and drinking, you know, a nice healthy breakfast or eating a nice healthy breakfast, exercising um, your mind and your body. Um, these are things that you can start tomorrow. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And just being intentional and clear about, you know, what it takes to be a realtor, where your business is coming from and how you're going to leverage that, how you're going to get more. 100% man. Well, listen, I've, I've so enjoyed this. I could talk to you for another hour. Um, let me ask you this. If, yeah. if somebody wants to get a hold of you to figure out exactly how you're doing this, how can they yeah. connect with you? Yeah. I mean, you can find me, obviously, just look at my name on Facebook, find my personal page, but also um, started a page called Agent Productivity. And so just launched that today, actually. Um, and what I'm going to be doing on there, I just did the first video is I'm going to be dropping, um, a video once a week, um, with something that I've learned or something that we're implementing in our business, um, that's helped us or that we feel is valuable. Um, so that, that's probably a great spot to start at. Love it. Love it. Love it, man. Well, as always, I love, love, love sharing these stories week after week, because I know this show is literally changing agents, financial lives, my own included. Do me a favor, if you know someone that might enjoy this podcast, please share it with them. And if you like the podcast, please go to wherever you listen to podcasts and smash that subscribe button. If you want to jump on a call, a 30-minute call with me for free um, to talk about your business, 
Go over to meetmikewall.com, sign up there. And Jeremy, let's put a bow on this one, my man. Thank you so much. Awesome. I'll talk to you later, Mike, and I'll see you soon. Sounds good, brother. Thank you so much. Right. Later. Uh -huh.